Foot Clan, this is it. This is your time. This is your time to win and become a fantasy champion. And this show is how you're going to do it. You won't believe what you're going to hear. This is Melvin Gordon from the Los Angeles Chargers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's a special day of the week. Apparently we're on the cusp of Christmas Day. I didn't even... It's my so- son told me this morning we were five days away. I said, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Ha, 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 stupid no, boy. No, Andy. It's ho, ho, ho. Because he's correct. We are <laughs> five de- days away. It's December 20th. Yeah. I'm feeling a little bit disappointed only in a like i didn't soak up enough christmas spirit you know what i mean like i told this i don't know why it's felt like we've been so busy but i'm still waiting for the two weeks that are right before christmas (laughs) where you go out and look at christmas lights and watch movies yeah like i'm looking forward to that time it's gonna be good (laughs) you only got a couple days left i mean how early did you guys start celebrating right after halloween yeah, right, yeah, you right. would think that that would have gotten it done. Still not enough, Brooks. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe we need to examine our philosophy. No, how dare you? All right. Friday, December 20th, welcome into the show. We got Foot Clan Friday today. We got the rest of the fantasy forecast, some news to catch you up on, ballers on a budget. A big weekend, three Saturday games, a, a Sunday slate, and then some of you, your title's going to come down to Monday Night Football. Yeah, it's a good game. Green Bay, Minnesota, a lot on the line. Yeah, and you've got the Dalvin Cook to Madison to Boone. Boone likely starting. I mean, Mike Boone's going to... Boone will win championships Yeah, that's for what people. I'm saying. That's that's the truth. I believe at the end of the day, there will be people who win their championship with Mike Boone. Just like we said at the beginning of the year, nobody listens. We told y'all... <laughs> Pick up Mike Boone if you're the Dalvin Cook owner. If you're, if you're the Alexander Madison owner because you're the Dalvin Cook it owner, always, pick up Mike Boone. Always handcuff your handcuffs. That's one of the big philosophies on this show. It's super successful. Jay Grizz, with, Jay Grizz is here as well. It's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Taylor Bradford, congratulations. Taylor Bradford, Foot Clan supporter from jointhefoot.com. You win. A $55 gift card to shopballers.com. Taylor, I hope you're a champion because there is a brand new Foot Clan title t-shirt. Actually, there's a hoodie. There's a shirt. There's some mugs. Uh, Multiple ways to brag. If you don't win your championship, you can still... Buy those things for whoever did win. Oh, yeah. Or you can just get yourself like a baller's t-shirt. I can't imagine you would ever buy me something. If you beat me in a championship, I can honestly say I would never get you something. I have that Time Hop app on my phone. Yep. That gives you the whatever happened a year ago, two years ago. One year ago today, do you know what you did, Jason? Probably celebrated a championship. Oh, was that when I got Brooks pizza? You bought Brooks yeah. a pizza before your matchup with him and delivered it to him in your weird, superstitious way of trying to pre-congratulate him for his title in order to win a title yourself. Which I did. I yeah. love pizza. I was going to say, you accepted the pizza with open arms, yeah, as Brooks. a consolation gift. Congratulations. You can't buy pizza on the website. Not our website. But you can buy a Foot Clan title shirt at shopballers.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Dalvin Cook not expected to play. Alexander Madison didn't practice on Thursday. After the show yesterday morning where I, you know, all but guaranteed Mike Boone starting, there was this Mike Zimmer quote. Mm-hmm. about Alexander Madison, quote, has a chance. How do you interpret that situation? I interpret that as he has a chance to do something someday. I mean, when Mike Zimmer talks about his players, 
uh, you you look at the history of what he said about Adam Thielen, got a lot of people excited for Thielen a whole lot of weeks, and it never came to fruition. So there's certain coaches, you know, if Bruce Arians says something, you, you can usually go with that. If he's like, oh, his hamstring looks bad, he's probably telling the truth. Um, but, yeah, with Zimmer, I, I look at what's going on in the practice field, what the beat reporters that are close by are saying. It looks like a high ankle sprain for Alexander Madison. He didn't participate at all last week. So far, not at all this week. I will be scared if he gets in a full practice. But even if he's limited on the sidelines or something, that he's not, I'm not worried about Madison. All right. We have confirmation that Julian Edelman will be playing this week. Never the best thing to have a player that needs confirmation like that that you're counting on. Last week, it was the same type of story, and he had a very bad performance. He's expected to play, but really troubling snap counts last week. An amazing Bills secondary. Really a primary option in Edelman that if you stop him, you slow this offense tremendously because we haven't seen a rapport with Mohamed Sanu or Nikhil Harry or Philip Dorsett in recent weeks, Brady's been bad. Yeah. So I heard Brady uh, Brady had a quote that <laughs> Edelman, like he's basically almost called Edelman out. He's like, he needs to have a good game this week. The like, dude is playing through some major, his shoulder, his knee. Um, I'm, I'm worried about Edelman, but if you're in a full PPR league and he's who got you here, it's going to be, you're going to have to have a really good option on the wire or – on your bench to end up benching Julian Edelman after one bad game. All right, Gerald Everett is going to play. Yeah, this is bad news for all of the Higby owners. I think it does have an impact. I would prefer to not play Higby, despite the fact that he has been on fire now with Everett back. I would pivot to Jacob Hollister if I was the Higby owner. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a big risk because Everett had had – what, eight reception games in the past before going down with the injury. If you're betting on a you know lower tier tight end to give you big numbers, I mean it's Henry, Hollister, Hooper, Howard, Cook, Howard, probably Wait, Goddard. Henry, Hollister, Hooper, Howard. Do you have to have your name starting with an H to be a championship worthy? Holloway. Whoa. I'm a tight end. That's what I've always said. Mm -hmm. uh, Derrick Henry didn't practice on Thursday, didn't practice last week. We expect him to be out there. It's not mentioned here, but Deion Lewis is banged up too. So Yeah, and uh, Joe Mixon, this, this is actually, I think, uh, something we have to keep our eyes on because he popped up on the Thursday injury report with a calf issue. And this is a new injury, so if he is actually... And it's a great matchup. Oh, it's so good. I mean, Joe Joe Mixon is a smash play. He would have been your start of the week, Andy, without a shred of doubt, if it wasn't too obvious that everyone in the world should be starting Joe Mixon. Like It was like, oh, I would have gone Joe Mixon. He's great. He's just a smash play. But now you have to pay attention. If, he is, if he's missing practices with the calf, I mean... There's risk. There's risk. But right now, it's preliminary. It's it's just a brand new injury, and that's what gives you concern. Yeah, because anytime it pops up late in the week and it's new, you didn't get to see it in a game, those, those have a tendency to end up with surprise inactives. And if that happened, you're in a situation with what? Giovanni Bernard against... Yeah, you're, against I'm, no. Mm -mm. I'm not... Why? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I pivot? Because it makes no sense when you look at like this is the DeAndre Washington argument from yesterday. Here's it's here. a we just said it's a smash matchup. Joe Mixon's a top five running back this week. When Lev Bell went out, people wanted to play Bilal Powell. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gio, Gio Bernard is better than Bilal Powell. When you know Josh Jacobs goes out, you end up with DeAndre Washington, who has never been able to sniff the field except for injury. But everybody's going to play DeAndre Washington. I don't know why you wouldn't pivot to Bernard in a. In a gorgeous matchup myself. I, I think the reason I don't and want... catch he catches passes. The reason I don't want to pivot to Bernard is because he's been so bad this year. He's he's just been... I mean, he's 3.4 yards of carry uh, behind that line. Like, Joe Mixon was bad. And then they figured out how to make Joe Mixon on this bad team with a bad offensive line good. And when you watch the plays, we literally you go to yesterday's show. I forget which show because we're, we're doing so many. 
I said he that Joe Mixon is making plays that no one else in the league would be able to do. And that that's the only reason Joe Mixon's been good. Now, the matchup is great, so maybe Joe could be an option, but I would rather you know, all those other names that you we just did, brought up. The, Bilal Powell was terrible on every on all of his carries before he had the opportunity. DeAndre Washington has not been good. That's all I'm saying. It's a great matchup. Would you play, I, I would happily play Gio Bernard instantaneously if he had the backfield to himself. Okay. Would you play him over the DeAndre Washington or Boons? Maybe. I would not. Yeah. I'm on record. Yeah, you are. All right, uh, game day alerts, jointhefoot.com, Sunday Live, uh, answering your start-sit questions one hour before Sunday kickoff. Very likely you'll have a Jason Moore Sunday Live experience this week. Congratulations. We'll get Mike back in here next week. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's get back in the forecast. Fantasy Forecast. We've got a lot of shows, uh, a lot of matchups to get through. Yeah, 10 matchups we're about to cover. One Let's breath. Go. One breath for all of them. Uh, yesterday, we covered six matchups Texans, Buccaneers, Bills, Patriots, Rams, 49ers. Those are your Saturday games. Check your lineups. Make sure you get the players out of the flex into the positional spot so you have flexibility. A weird situation like the Joe Mixon one can come up, and all of a sudden, you want Joe Mixon in your flex, yeah. While you've got these Saturday players, yep. who you know you would normally be in your flex, get them get them into the RB and the wide receiver spot. Yeah, like Mostert or Gurley, and then the Giants, Redskins, Bengals, Dolphins, Saints, Titans. We covered those games yesterday as well. Let's jump into the Steelers Jets matchup. The Steelers are eight and six. The Jets are five and nine. Steelers uh, on the road here and just three point favorites in a thirty seven point over under. The Steelers, while, look, they're defined by their defense right now. They're fighting for a playoff spot. But the truth is they can, they're going to win dirty mm -hmm. each and every week. And they've done an amazing job coaching their way through. No Big Ben. Uh, you know, you're, you've got Duck Hodges behind center. You've had no James Conner, no Juju. That'll change this week. It looks like it. Juju got uh, full practice. Uh, yesterday, so it it appears he's going to be back on the field. You don't put him in your lineup. No, no, I'm not starting uh, Juju Smith-Schuster by any means, but it is it's good news for Pittsburgh, which is mostly irrelevant. Because yeah. there's only one player on Pittsburgh that you can consider starting, and that's James Conner. That's correct. James Conner, uh, they want to integrate him into every – they want to win with defense and James Conner. If they can, if Connor's body allows them to do that. And, you know, last week he was all right. Well, you saw a major timeshare last week, for you know, that, which is not, you know, you look at the, the weeks prior when he was healthy, you know, James Connor three weeks ago played like, or uh, three games ago was 83% of, uh, you know, the offensive snaps. This last week was 58%. But I still think he's being given the most valuable snaps, the ones that matter. That's when Connor's out there. The goal line, uh, you know, the important uh, passing downs. So he's the best pass catching running back and the best between the tackles running back on the team. And it's not close. Not even close. No. And so, yeah, you're right. That's the only option you're really looking at in this matchup. With Juju coming back, it devalues James Washington as a dart throw, Deontay Johnson as a dart throw, and puts you squarely on the shoulders of Connor, who we have outside the, you know, top 12, but as a running back two this week. I have him ahead. One spot over the uh, running back on the other side of the field, Le'Veon Bell, who has had enough volume to be a fine running back too most weeks for fantasy football. He's not what you drafted, but he's also not the worst. But this is a terrible matchup. And so Lev Bell, the last two times we've seen him, he has not been a running back too. He's the running back 28 and the running back 32. This is a horrific matchup. Are you scared to start him, or are you just starting him with low expectations? Yeah, I, I think I have a little bit of apprehension, but know that the volume will be there, and if you give him enough volume, you could be on that. Um, he's in the start-worthy category, RB2 flex category. Devlin Hodges had four picks last week. Darnold's been playing poorly. I, whatever quarterback turns the ball over less wins the game, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Are you going to start any of the receiving options? Robbie Anderson, Jameson Crowder. Oh, you had such a big game. 
I'm out. I'm O U T. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. This is not what I want for my title game. I've made that decision in my CBS championship. I'm moving on from Robbie Anderson, and I'm you know playing John Ross. John Ross over Robbie Anderson. I think I am. I think you just said it all right there. Do not play Robbie. Anderson. I say, saying that out loud makes me feel dumb. It makes me feel it makes dumb. Makes you sound a little dumb, to be honest. It makes me sound dumb. <laughs> yeah, because you just said you're playing John Ross. That's right. You're going with your gut. I am going with the the mentality that I don't win based on the past. I win based on this week. And this is a terrible matchup for Robbie Anderson, a terrible matchup for Jameson Crowder. I'm not leaning on uh, that situation. I trust that John Ross will have more opportunity against Miami. One of those guys. I can't, I can't believe I'm doing that. Though. One of these I, guys. Just saying it, Brooks. Yeah. Probably gets a touchdown here because I think Sam Darnold throws a touchdown. And so it more than likely goes to one of these two guys. Okay. Uh, you have no idea who. And without it, it's yes. a bad day. It's, it's a terrible day for whoever doesn't get a touchdown. So, yeah, I mean, basically start James Conner, start Love Bell, RB2s, moving on. Ravens 12-2, and two, Browns 6-8. and eight. The Ravens are 10-point favorites. It's a 49-point over-under. Part of the discussion this week has been the fact that if the Bills beat the Patriots, the Ravens lock up home field advantage throughout the playoffs, which could affect their willingness to stretch the players out for the duration of this game. Uh, maybe, you know, I think a good situation to illustrate that might be Gus Edwards takes just as many carries as Mark Ingram in this game or something of that extent. The other side of the coin is the Patriots are favored to win on Saturday. And this is a divisional game against one of the teams, one of the two teams, that have defeated the Ravens. The Ravens are heavy favorites, and they smash everybody. And you want a part of the smash. Yeah, as of now, you, while while you need to be prepared for some kind of weird, bizarre, shocking, uh, uh, they're not going to play Lamar, which we don't expect to happen. Be prepared, but operate as if you're getting these great players, because you probably are. Yeah, absolutely. What are the other big question marks for you in this ballgame? You have... Uh, you know, Nick Chubb, you're a little bit concerned because anytime you play the Ravens, you you worry about the ceiling not being very high. But Nick Chubb just, he's a very good player, and he can be stifled for three quarters of the game and bust off a 50-yard run. He's done it over and over again. He had a bunch of chunk plays last week against Arizona in a game that they were destroyed in. So you're not benching Nick Chubb. No, no, you're certainly not ben benching Nick Chubb. He's been uh, a rock star that's gotten you to the playoffs. He's had a couple disappointing games. He certainly hasn't been the player prior to Hunt coming into the lineup. Uh, you've you've got, you know, he was like the running back three or four. Now he's over the last eight weeks been the running back seven. He's still good. Yeah, Lamar Jackson, you're playing him. You're playing him if he's active under any circumstance from the night before. So if I if I if I heard John Harbaugh come out and say, "Yeah, I'm glad we clinched this," you know, go Bills. Uh, we may give him a few plays off today. I'm playing Lamar Jackson. Yes, 100 percent. Because unless I only they, need a few plays. Unless they, if he gets a half, a half of Lamar Jackson. That's fine. Is probably better than what ev what ever other option you could possibly have he's playing so well that they bench him every game anyway exactly he he doesn't score much in the fourth quarter of any of his games and he's averaging like eight or nine more points per game than the number two quarterback Jameis Winston over the last half of the year but 39 percent of you know that that would be the 39 percent of uh championship game uh commissioners or uh players that have him on the roster the top five players as tweeted by Michael Fabiano, Christian McCaffrey at 49% of championship teams. The Patriots D on 42%. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Mike's not here, but I am the you, you Darren Waller on 41% of teams, Lamar Jackson on 39%, and Austin Eckler, who yeah. Mike called before the season to be a top uh, 10 running back on 32% of teams. Mark Ingram, you're going to play him. What do you do with Hollywood Brown? Saw I, some flashes last week, but you haven't had yardage to back it up, so he's got to get in the end zone, but that's a decent probability with Lamar Jackson against Cleveland. I actually like Hollywood Brown quite a bit in this matchup. This is um, uh, 
you know, th you've got a revenge game narrative here. This is one of only two teams that have beat the Ravens. The Ravens are going to want to come out and put their stamp of approval on this game. And I think Hollywood has been excellent. You had this stretch in the middle of the year where he was so banged up. They, he would play a few snaps and still be okay because he'd catch a long bomb. But he looks like he's recovered now. And unless, you know, especially if the Patriots win and there's something to play for in this game, I like Hollywood quite a bit. I don't think the Browns secondary can stop a guy with that speed. You, would you play Hollywood Brown over somebody like Sterling Shepard playing the roulette with Daniel Jones in, I would. in New York? Okay. I would. Trusting Lamar a little bit more. Uh, I'd personally play him over John Ross. Yeah. So well, I don't have that option. No, no, I know. But you're just throwing at that. They're both speedy guys yeah, you, with you, decent matchups, but one's got Lamar Jackson. And one's a number one on the team. Tyler Boyd is my start of the week, so sure. I like Boyd more, uh, obviously, than Ross. But desperate times, Jason. I know. Desperate championship times. Um, looking at the other side, Kareem Hunt, is he a flex play to you? Oh, absolutely. Kareem Hunt, since he got back in week 10, is the running back. 15. Would you rather flex Kareem Hunt or Odell Beckham Jr.? Kareem Hunt, and it's not close. All right. Jarvis Landry, congratulations. You get to face Pro Bowler Marlon Humphrey. Oh, Odell good. Beckham, you get to play uh, face Pro Bowler Marcus Peters. Congratulations. I'm so happy that the the industry is finally caught up with Odell Beckham being bad. Like Every week I have to move him down like 10 spots from you know where where most people are and this week he's by default in the low 30s. That's where just, he should be. Yeah, nice, nice in week 16 to catch up. Yeah, um, that that's about it for the matchup. You're playing Mark Andrews. Want to take a moment? Thank today's sponsor. This holiday season, you got to immerse yourself in those holiday classics with a new home theater system from Sonos. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've got some Sonos around the house. They're great. I went over to my sister's apartment. We hung out, had some dinner. She'd never watched Stranger Things. I turn it on oh, the TV. No. She, the sound, I'm telling you, that soundtrack deserves a lot better than what she had going on in there. It deserves like, a Sonos. I'm already planning the Sonos purchase. Hopefully she doesn't hear this so I can surprise her. But it, look, they have speech enhancement mode. This is something my wife loves. Unique feature. It clarifies the sound of the human voice. If you got kids, you need to hear the voice, but you don't want to jam the volume all the way up. Turn it on the Sonos app. Never miss a moment of the story. Um, and you got five days left. Play those Christmas carols as well. Absolutely love my Sonos system. It is uh, one of the best technological pieces of my home. You can go to Sonos.com uh, Sonos to learn more and complete your holiday shopping. That's Sonos.com. And Foot Clan, in three days, you will be a champion. A fantasy football champion in three days. I'm calling it now. Yes, you. I'm... You're, you're like, wait, me? Yes, you. You're going to be a champ <laughs> in three days, and you need to go to fantasychamps.com. But, Jason. Yes, voice of public opinion. What if I'm not in, in the championship game? <laughs> well, then upgrade your league. <laughs> upgrade your league with an awesome, you know, 19-year perpetual trophy at fantasychamps.com. But here's the thing. Usually we're like, hey, use the promo code BALLERS. You get 10% off. But we've got a much better deal going right now. You use the promo code free ring. Innovative. It, very innovative. I know what's going to happen next. <laughs> yes. And you will get a championship ring, a $60, one of those super blinged out, like Super Bowl rings for free when you purchase either a trophy or a belt. Because it's always the hardship of like, which one do I get? Do How I about get a both? trophy? Do I get a belt? Do I get a ring? Get one, get the ring for free with free ring at checkout. Check it out, fantasychamps.com. Panthers at 5-9 and nine take on the Indianapolis Colts. They're 6-8. and eight. Both of these teams, disappointing seasons. Both uh, with some downward momentum. The Colts are heavy home favorites because Will Greer is getting the start. Six and a half points. I like them to cover. It's a 46-point over-under. Jason, you've brought up Marlon Mack's name and your confidence in Marlon Mack, and it's been necessary because... I had to hear you talk about it, not just on yesterday's show, but I had to hear you talk about it on the SiriusXM show again mm -hmm. before it got me, before you got to me. You broke through my we, icy heart. We made it. This we, holiday season about Marlon Mack because it's been bad. It's, it's been so – it's been a while since he's helped you. 
It's been terrible, and I know. I know for a fact. In fact, one of our uh, writers, Lauren Carpenter, right now in her championship matchup, she has Marlon Mack on the bench. And I'm, you know, and, and she's so going with her you're gut. Call out right now. But here. I, oh, yeah. Because look, Marlon Mack is, he's a home favorite by a large margin against the worst rushing defense in the league. It is a recipe for success for Marlon Mack. That's why he's my start of the week. I, you know, the only possible scary situation here, I did hear Frank Reich say that they're going to try some new things now that they're out of the playoffs with Jacoby Brissett. That's it. <laughs> my, hey, maybe one of those is he, things is they're going to throw the ball to Marlon Mack a little bit more. I thought maybe maybe Brissett would try left-handed, like throw, it wouldn't throw be the worse, ball left-handed. It wouldn't be worse than last week. Here's the thing, though. I like the matchup, but you need something to ensure the game script, right? Right. Will Greer. Ensures it. Yeah. Bring him into the picture. You know, both of these teams thought they'd be divisional contenders. The Colts have lost four in a row. The Panthers have lost six in a row. They fired their coach. They're seeing what they got on the bench. Uh, remember the Ryan Finley experiment in Cincinnati? They wanted <laughs> yeah. to see what they had. Yes. And maybe Will Greer will surprise, but I'm not betting on it. His best feature is simply being named like my favorite cheese. Is that your favorite cheese? Oh, Are you talking about Greer? Greer cheese. I don't even know if I can Nobody say it. Nobody knows how to say it. That's why it's so special. Will Greer? Yes. Does Greer cheese stink? Is uh, it one no. of those stinky cheeses? No, not it's, oh, okay. it's not too bad. It's just Some of straight them up delicious. We'll see if it stinks this week. Yeah. Jacoby Brissett <laughs> did not play well last week. You're not these are not options. These are not quarterback options worth talking about. No, but the wide receivers for both teams are the big question marks. T. Y. Hilton, he fifty two percent of the snaps last week, did not have a good game, very limited. They talked about getting him more involved this week, and then DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel. They, all all three of these guys have quarterback problems right now. DJ Moore has enough volume and he's done he's had enough production without touchdowns in the past, you know, eight weeks to where you can play DJ Moore. I, I am confident in DJ Moore at this point. T. Y. Hilton, on the other hand, look, I, I liked the price on FanDuel when I was looking for the ballers on a budget segment later. The question is, do you trust T. Y. Hilton? And in the your, answer is of course not. No. Not in your championship week. Not with uh, uh, an injury hobbling him right now, not with the snap percentages. Not no. with Jacoby Brissett. Not yeah. with Frank Reich trying new things. Look, thing number one should be having a healthy T.Y. Hilton next year, to be honest with you. So outside of, of D.J. Moore, not a lot of confidence on uh, the wide receiver front. Not really willing to go to the Jack Doyle route myself. I am not either. He's He's been, like, watching the last few games, I've had him in some lineups, and he's just been... A step slow. These big, heavy linebackers are covering him. No problemo. And then Greg Olson, we've differed on our opinion on whether Greg Olson will be heavily involved in this game, but we haven't really talked. Like, would you play him? I think you said you wouldn't play him in fantasy. You just expect him out there. Ian Thomas tossed into irrelevance again, and Will Greer gives you no confidence across the board. You right? don't know what he's going to do, so you know, go with other. Go with the H's this week. <laughs> Is that what we? The yeah, tight ends, the, tight end, the H's are the Hoopers the and the Howards and the mm, okay the Hollisters. Yeah, that's that's a good tip. Yep, Holloway, get them out there. Jackson, no, Jacksonville, five and nine, taking on the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are five and nine. Falcons are seven and a half point favorites. I would take the Falcons in the you know to cover. The Jaguars are just imploding. Although they did win last week. Yeah. Yeah, we had that uh, the little the last second Conley touchdown, yep. forty six and a half point over under. Atlanta's at home. Matt Ryan is Jason's start of the week at the quarterback position. He leads the league in pass attempts. He's been pretty darn good, and we realized this on the serious show yesterday. He's been a start of the week on this show for three consecutive weeks, mm -hmm. and the last two times he's been a top ten wide uh, quarterback. So why not? complete the trifecta let's do three for three yeah and i like devonta freeman devonta freeman was my start of the week at the running back position six consecutive weeks jacksonville's given up top performances to the running back and you're just in a position where you know devonta freeman will get 15 to 19 touches overall and that has meant a lot when you face jacksonville now have we vet, have we vetted this is he really leading the league in passing attempts are because he missed three games and if or two games right 
I mean, he missed games. If he's leading the league in passing attempts while missing games, that's a really cool stat. Could be a big lie. It could be a really cool lie. Um, but I take a look. I will take a little look. See, uh, that just shocks we can me. fire people here. I mean, this doc even says Mike's start of the week is Devonta Freeman, and that's mine. So oh this could all be goodness. a lie. Come on. I mean, from a trust perspective, I blame Mike. I think it's Mike's fault. He's not here to defend himself. <laughs> Jay blames Mike. Yeah. Um, but you can check that. Maybe that's per game basis. But he's obvi he's throwing the ball a lot. He hasn't had running. You know, Devonta Freeman's missed time this year, and Matt Ryan has been able to. It's funny through the first six weeks. You know, Matt Ryan was a top five quarterback during Matt, during that time. Okay, so Matt Ryan is five hundred and twenty. The leader is Winston at five fifty four. But on a per game basis, that makes he's sense. number one. Yeah. Okay. Gardner Minshew, no thank you. Leonard Fournette, he's kind of stuck in your lineup, right? I mean, Leonard Fournette is not somebody that you're going to bench. He's had a couple of subpar weeks outside the top 24, but you're going to play him against Atlanta. What are we expecting? Another Julio touchdown Jones performance? You you put in a call last week. Mm -hmm. You said, Julio, add a middle name. And I'm a little worried this week on the touchdown part because he double dipped last week instead oh, of spreading did. one okay. each week. But uh, no, he's been awesome. Fifty one percent of the target or the the target share last week, more than half of Matt Ryan's passes went his direction. They won the game. They're at home. I think Julio No Calvin Ridley should have uh, another monster game here against a team that's uh, you know, okay. They're middle of the pack against wide receivers. Yeah, they're and floundering dj chark limited practices wednesday and thursday he's got 44 yards he needs to accumulate to hit 1000 this year what yeah he's a thousand yard receiver how are you surprised that's a great question but i just feel like he hasn't done i thought your surprise was literally just that he hasn't done it already i mean he's he's been gobbling up yardage especially at the front end of the season dealing with injury now but even in a you know injury shortened game, he had a ton. Wait, oh, DJ Chark, correct? The name I said that makes um that makes a hundred. I'm like that can't be true again. Who did, I was, what did you hear? I thought you were talking about Chris Conley. That's a different name and, and person. Is, and he is not that close to a thousand yards. That is correct. Yeah, I if apologize. You, honestly, if you sub in a different name for yeah. any of these stats, Nick they're O'Leary, almost, they're almost always wrong. <laughs> close to a thousand yards. That can't be true. Uh, but no, DJ Chark is. Yeah. yeah. Well, that makes complete sense. See, I think he's going to be back out there. But then you look at that situation and you cannot play Westbrook and Conley. No, but the question is, can you play DJ Chark if he's active? Would you play DJ Chark if he's active or Robbie Anderson in that matchup? Oh, and to, for me, I'd go Chark. I like, would go Chark there because Robbie is like in the 40s for me. And while I'm probably going to be lower on Chark than most people, I don't think it's going to be that low. I was pretty confident that Chark would have a nice game if he could get back out there last week just with the propensity of Gardner Minshew to just he just heavily targets Chark. So if he's out there, I'm okay with that. In Austin Hooper, I've been super bummed out the last two weeks. He's back, but is he? Yeah. He's back, but he kind of like... Three weeks back from this injury, he should be, f he should be fully healed, ready to go, full strength. Last week... He had a touchdown that was then, you know, the ball touched the ground a little, and there's debate yeah, as that to whether counted. I think it should have, whatever. But the point is, you wouldn't have been disappointed last week if that call was not overturned. Um, and so another week of health at home in a dome. I'm, I'm Austin Hooper's a must H start. name. Exactly. Yeah. Raiders at 6-8 and eight take on the 5-9 and nine Chargers. Chargers are seven-point favorites. It's a 45-and-a-half point over under. Chargers were absolutely destroyed last week. When you look at these two teams, Chargers being seven-point favorites, they have a worse record than the Raiders, but I expect them to get it done at home. That is weird. A seven-point favorite, and they're on the road. Because, make no mistake, this will be a home game for the Raiders. In Los Angeles, that crowd will 100% be Oakland Raider fans. Yeah, this is a... I don't feel like... the. I feel like the Chargers are going to cover this spread. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, the, Ra the Raiders, in their in your defense, have not done much to say we can score or stop people from scoring lately. They lost to the Jaguars at home. 
let's let's face off in some of these fantasy decisions from this game because I think there is opportunity here, but you haven't been able to rely on options. You're, you will get Hunter Renfro back out there. So talk to me about Darren Waller. Is his ceiling captain Hunter Renfro is back out there this week? Yeah, as soon as Hunter Renfro has been on the field soaking up targets, once he got that start a couple of weeks into the season, you saw a an exact dip of Darren Waller's targets, and then Hunter Renfro goes out, and Waller is back. So now if Hunter Renfro is expected to be out there, I expect more of those targets to go his way than Waller's way. So it's not to say you can't start Waller or you shouldn't start Waller. Waller was still startable while Hunter Renfro was out there, you know, multiple weeks. But I do think his ceiling is capped. What you saw last week, you know, we're, we got to the championship in League One. Waller is on that roster. It was great. So many targets going his way. I don't, I don't think that happens in this game. Okay. And then uh... – are you taking a shot? Are you willing to stream Philip Rivers? I know you have problems with him on a deep psychological, emotional, personal level. But when you look at the matchup, the Raiders give up 22.1 fancy points per game to the quarterback position. That's second worst in the league. Philip Rivers is at home. Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen. They can overcome what has been Philip Rivers this year in this matchup. I really believe they can. I think Rivers has a shot at a top 12 week. Can I interest you in 207 passing yards? It's not enough. What no. about if I added three interceptions? You're going back in time. I'm going back five weeks to when they played the Oakland Raiders, and the smash matchup seems so good that Phillip Rivers and all these weapons could overcome. Yeah, but remember they had to travel so far to get to Oakland? <laughs> yeah. I, They're on the road. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I can't do it. <laughs> but, you know, if you're in a two-quarterback league, the matchup does say and the weapons do say that he should have a good game. But this has been the year. Uh, this is the end of Phillip Rivers. He's looked He's certainly so, the end of your Phillip Rivers experience. Yes. but He's gotten off the ride. I think it's the end of the Chargers Rivers experience. I think that they will be looking to replace him. They already are looking to replace him. They have to. Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler, we have them at RB11 and 14 on the week. This is a great opportunity matchup. Before last week's dud for Melvin Gordon, he had been a top 24 running back seven consecutive weeks. Austin Eckler needs no explanation. He's the RB6 on the season and just too integral to the offense. I've looked Mike Williams' way a few times this week. He's been on fire. Uh, he's finally getting into the end zone. Not quite start of the week category, but he's hanging but out he, at he, the same like outside the club. Yeah, he's definitely start a bull. Uh, while he's not necessarily the start of the week, if you look at the last three weeks and you take a look at the Chargers and you go, okay, you know, obviously Keenan Allen's going to start, but can you start Mike Williams? Well, Mike Williams has been better than Keenan Allen the last three weeks, being a top twenty-four wide receiver each of those weeks for Mike Williams. Uh, and that's not to say Keenan Allen has been bad. Uh, they're both, I mean, Mike Williams has been the wide receiver 13 and Keenan Allen, the wide receiver 18 over the last three weeks. It's a good matchup, but the, it's to illustrate your point that the, we talked about this off air the other day. The gap between these two is monumental usually in our rankings. We look at just putting, and then we and then we second guess ourselves and say, why? Why, is, why are we saying Keenan is a must start and Mike Williams is like in a pinch when the targets and the depth of target and the yardage is kind of, being spread out evenly between these guys. Yeah, and Tyrell, you can't play Tyrell Williams. Nope. You cannot do it. The Chargers cornerbacks allowing the third fewest fantasy points and Oakland wide receivers, not reliable at this point. Uh, the you know Darren Waller is a much better play than Tyrell Williams. Yes. Uh, I still think Waller has a very solid game for us in League One because I gave him a call. I said, Darren, oh. touchdown Waller. You see what I'm saying? Play it. He was a PPR guy last week. Play the drop. <laughs> Come on, you, 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 the fuck clan needs you, Darren. And before we move on, the DeAndre Washington situation. We know Jacobs is out. People want to know where Washington is. Would you play Washington or Mike Boone this week? If Boone is secured as the starter on Monday Night Football, Washington or Boone? If I knew for sure, I, I have flipped. If I knew for sure and I feel very confident right now that it's Boone, um, Boone is ahead in my rankings as of now, but I really like Washington as well. I think that, you know, about the running back 20 is a good spot. The Chargers have such a good pass D. 
And I don't think that Derek Carr and Hunter Renfro and even Darren Waller are going to be able to do enough to, to you know, matter against the Chargers' pass D, but they don't have a good run D. And so I think DeAndre Washington is going to be able to succeed here. The Lions at 3-10-1 and one take on the Denver Broncos in Denver. Broncos are 5-9. and nine. This game has a very low over-under of 37.5 points, but the Broncos are heavy favorites. So the implied point total for Denver, 22 points. Just 15.5 points for the Lions. This Yucky. is why I am all in on the Broncos' defense this week. They're starting in my championship matchup over good options like Atlanta. I think Atlanta's a good defensive streaming, you know, off the waiver pickup this week. I'm playing them. Uh, I'm playing the Broncos over that one. What question marks do you have in this game, though? I mean, Mike has brought up Cortland Sutton as a start of the week, and I get it. Lion, the Lions' defense gives up 33 points a game to wide receivers. And Cortland Sutton is the wide receiving core. Yes. And they're at home. So I don't see how you... It, you you should not bench Cortland Sutton. Uh, last week he had 10 targets. You give him 10 targets against Detroit, it's going to work out well. Yeah, absolutely. So he's in your lineup. Carry on Johnson. <laughs> might be able to play. He expects to be able to play. He hopes to be able to play. Oh, you're not going to – Oh, yeah, you could give it's me the drop. It's been a lot. Oh. You want the drop? I do want the drop. That's not an appropriate drop No, for somebody that – Has been injured for the majority of the season. You say, Wait, are you on, trying you to say wanna... that super fast because you didn't want me to, like, jump in with disappointing Yeah, or anything of that nature? You just want it to be marked by injury? I think the injury is the major mark. I, okay. I, I, I mean, really do. Which only year? Last a, year or this year? I think career. Okay. I would say career. Just making that point. Yeah. I wouldn't be tempted in Denver. This is not a good situation. If he's back, he might be back with a Bo Scarborough, some Ty Johnson, and a whole lot of David Blau. The Broncos' defense is good from top to bottom. There's, They don't really have a weakness the way that the Chargers are great against the pass and weak against the run. This isn't a great spot, and you can't imagine that they're going to come in and give Kerryon Johnson some major workload on his first game back from being injured often. So, you know, Kerryon Johnson. No thanks. No thanks. Pass. Kenny Galladay. Is he going to play great, Kenny? Carry on. Play great, carry on. I just want him to show show out. I want him to be great. Okay, it's a, bro it's a bro broken man. Uh, Philip Lindsay. We have him as the RB eighteen this week. It's a plus matchup. They're at home. The game script should favor running back. Um, the, the Lions are bad from top to bottom. You might say they're not really strong against anything. They're correct. The exact opposite defense. So, Lindsay confident this week. Yeah, I he's mean, done everything he can to not make fantasy owners confident rb 31 over the last five games that's bad it is it is bad i mean you you've got a guy who looks good on film but doesn't get enough carries doesn't get enough targets doesn't get the goal line work necessarily and at the end of those three things the fantasy points aren't there so he's a he's someone that i think is a flex option uh in a good matchup but you're worried i mean you you just if he doesn't get a touchdown, his games have been bad. And okay. this is a game with a 37.5 point over under where you don't expect a ton of points to, to be had. You don't expect a ton of yards in this game back and forth. So uh, he's he's not someone I'm excited about. Um, when you went back to beckon carry on Johnson for a good game for some reason, uh, we were beginning to talk about Kenny Galladay and, and that situation there. I'm trying to find a player to play over Kenny Galladay this week. Makes sense. Because the realistic outcomes in this matchup on the road for David Blau is that Kenny Galladay catches one bomb type of play. He's moved categorically into that big play or touchdown requ required with David Blau. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So smooth routes. Are we expecting them this week? Let me give you some options. Okay. Um, are you playing? Uh, you're playing Sutton over Galladay. Yes, this exact matchup. Yes. Are you playing somebody like DK Metcalf over Galladay? <sighs> I am. I am not. Okay. Um, are you playing Jarvis Landry? 
Oh man, over Jarvis Kenny Galladay. Jarvis been so good, such bad matchup. I will not play Jarvis over Kenny Galladay. Last one, Michael Gallup. Oh man, this would this goes from my st want to be start of the week, Michael Gallup. I'm you know I'm a worry wart wart. I can't can't ever say <laughs> is that it. The but second time today that you've yeah. been some sort of but the, wart. The reality is, um. I don't trust Dak's shoulder right now, so I'm going to go Kenny G there. I, I still trust Kenny Galladay's talent. It's not a good matchup. It's a low over-under, and it's not a good quarterback. But, I mean, you've had a stretch run of those type of situations where Galladay has still been okay. I mean, what what week did Matthew Stafford go out? Because if you uh, – and it hasn't all been Blau. But yeah, you, Dr Driscoll su supplied some production. Yeah. It's not like Driscoll is a, some great quarterback either. My point no, is, no, since not. week eight, what? Where's Kenny Galladay? What? What? What wide receiver rank do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean he's been ping pongy. Yeah. Since week eight. Yeah. I don't know, fifteen. Five. So he's just super talented. It's hard to sit a guy that's that talented. Yeah, but you've faced that same situation with Sutton many times this year, where confidence is tough in certain matchups. Yeah. But. Um, but you illustrated it with the players that you would and wouldn't start over him. The Cardinals at four nine and one travel to Seattle. The Seahawks at eleven and three. Seahawks ten point favorites, a fifty one point over under. Russell Wilson, my start of the week here at home, battling for that one seed. Kyler Murray, are you willing to play him in this game, Jason? One hundred percent, I am willing to play Kyler Murray in this game. The Seattle's defense ranks thirty first in passing touchdown rate. Um, you know, so Kyler last week had a great game, but four touchdowns, um, with the know, Kenyon with Drake Kenyon direction Drake. And so I, I am fine with Kyler Murray. I, I think he's a good start this week. All right. Kenyon Drake, you just mentioned him. Steve Kime just came out this morning, said they want to re-sign him if they can bring him back. He's up to the RB 20 on the year. Seahawks defense. I, you know, Drake has to be an RB2 to RB3 this week. Yeah, you're not chasing four touchdowns. He he hasn't been that great for fantasy outside of two games where he was phenomenal for fantasy. So you, you, you don't want to lose out on that. But he is the clear starter, and this is a decent matchup. Seahawks are middle of the pack um, as far as the defense goes. Now, this is in Seattle. Um, but, yeah, I, I would say an RB2 play for Kenyon Drake. Pretty impossible to bench a guy that just – Probably got you to the title on four touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, gonna, you're, you're he's going to be in most people's lineup, and he clearly is the running back that will get the opportunity on the goal line because three of those touchdowns came right there at the goal line. Uh, Christian Kirk, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. Kirk has missed some time this week. I'm not super excited about him on the road here, to be honest. Um, he averages a ton of targets. But him missing some more time this week tells me he's not quite back from what's been ailing him. Tyler Lockett seemed back last week, week 15, 8 for 120 and a touchdown. He gets a rookie in Byron Murphy for the majority of this game. I think Tyler Lockett is a, a league winner. Yeah, Tyler Lockett is a good play. DK Metcalf is is fine. He's, you know, this is the the type of matchup where you go, okay, this is good unless the the touchdowns go Hollister's way, which against Arizona could very well happen. Um, you know, I'm not even though I say Kyler's fine because he's rushing, I'm not sure who as an Arizona pass catcher I would really want to start. Larry hasn't been great. Kirk hasn't been great. You know, he's, he's spreading the ball around. You've got the postman. The postman is back. Dan Arnold, remember him, at tight end. Seattle's been terrible against tight end. Dan Arnold caught a touchdown last week. Maybe Dan Arnold gets another touchdown. Kyler would be fine. Larry and Kirk, not so not so great. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Hollister, we've talked about him quite a bit this week. A great tight end option, not only because his name begins with H, but because he but plays primarily. the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Cowboys at seven and seven take on the Eagles at seven and seven. Oh, what a game! It's exciting. It's fun. We've got the Dak Prescott shoulder headache to sort through. 
Got word this morning that it's trending positively for Delane Johnson to be back out there for oh, Philadelphia. Oh, fantastic. That's a big deal for Carson Wentz. It's a big deal for Miles Sanders. And just the offense moving the chains, something they've struggled to be able to do over the last two weeks, only to piece it together at the very end of those matchups. Who do you like? Who do you like to win this game? The Cowboys are one-and-a-half-point favorites. The Cowboys coming into this week were definitely the team I was picking, but I, I, you know, I've said it. I am worried about the shoulder issue, and if it acts up and Dak can't be the Dak, you know, the, here's, the, here's the range of outcomes for Dak. Either his shoulder's fine, and he's great. This is a, a very good matchup. He's, you know, a, a number six, number seven quarterback on the week, has a solid week, and the Cowboys come out and win. Or... Dak's shoulder isn't good, and he's either missing throws or they've got a game plan to run with Ezekiel Elliott and, you know, Gallup and Cooper take a major hit because they're not throwing the ball downfield, and it, the game slows down, and it's a slugfest in division. And so both of those being within the, the realistic range of outcomes, to me, makes me want to pivot off of Cowboy options if I have good replacements. I'm coming around on, like, I think Dallas wins the football game, and I'm coming around on Dak being okay. We went through this. Would you play Dak in your championship yeah. matchup? Yeah, I'd be willing to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, we, we went through this a little bit last week with Lamar, and Lamar is a different, you know, a different category. But all week long, there was worry about the quad, worry about whether he'd run. Um, his team, Dak's team, expects him to be out there. You, you can't run on Philadelphia. You might choose to. You might choose to do it. You just can't do it very well. And certainly they're going to put put it on Dak to beat them. They're secondary, very beatable. I think Dak in this game with what's on the line, I think he steps up. And I, I don't have any reason to believe today more than yesterday that he's you know, more severely hurt or not going to be available, not going to be out there. He played the majority of that game last week with the injury. And um, I'm just trending more in the positive direction for Dak in general. Yeah, I mean, he not got, without risk, but just I'm just giving you my opinion. Sure, Dak got injured in the first quarter, so the vast he didn't leave the game. the The whole game he played with that injury, but that's where you had Amari Cooper with 19 yards, Gallup I think with six yards, and Randall Cobb with negative three yards, and and Dak didn't really do much. It was all Zeke, and yes, it's very difficult to run on Philly. It has been the whole year, but I mean. They they ran on they have a special offensive line. I mean, Ezekiel Elliott was uh, 20, 20 carries for one hundred and eleven yards and a touchdown the last two times these teams played. Uh, granted, that was in Dallas. Maybe that makes a, a difference, but uh, I think they're going to be able to run better than we expect. All right, Zeke. By the way, the only running back to be in the top twenty four every single week this year sounds he it sounds very Zeke like. Yeah, he is uh, exactly where he was drafted ADP. That's where he's ranking right now on the season. So he's been fine, but mm -hmm. you hoped he would be better. You, you hoped, hoped you'd have more weeks winning. Games, yeah. yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, Carson Wentz, where are you at with him this week? Are you messing around with Carson Wentz? I'm trying to not mess around with Carson Wentz. You know, I've got Matt Ryan and Carson Wentz in one of my championship rosters. It's an easy Matt Ryan for me. This game could be an ugly, you know, scrap and f claw and fight type of uh game I, I don't I don't think this is going to turn into a high scoring barn burner you hear Deshaun Jackson might be back for the playoffs what playoffs I saw the future oh that's right they no that's the, the funny Bowl. thing about me picking the Cowboys here is it would be better for my you know Super Bowl prediction yeah my soothsaying if the Eagles fought their way into the playoffs but um Thanks, d -Jax. I could have used you the entire year, but the playoffs, is that's great. That's great, man. Uh, Miles Sanders, Mike's start of the week at running back. He's just been so heavily involved ever since Jordan Howard's gone out. Nothing's changed with Jordan Howard. Boston Scott, still getting snaps in the backfield, involved in the passing game. It's high risk, but I, I don't have a problem flexing Boston Scott in this matchup personally. Full, the options are limited for Carson Wentz. If you're in a full PPR, I completely agree because he he's, he's going to have – Six or seven catches. Would you backfield. flex Boston Scott in this game, or would you flex Anthony Miller against Kansas City? I would go Anthony Miller. Anthony Miller has been too involved. It's not the greatest matchup, but I'm not going to go away from someone who's like up near the league lead in targets for a, a running back who's pretty much had two weeks in the NFL is what it seems like. 
All right, and then you brought him up, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, confidence. Those seem to be directly connected to your view on Dak. So you're finding options outside of them if possible. Um, I think that they are both risky with the situation and with how they've been producing. A big dud last week for Gallup, and then Cooper's just struggled. He went from the wide receiver three over the first seven weeks of the season to the wide receiver 33 over the, the remainder. So that moves him out of the you have to start him under any circumstance category. We're certainly going Devontae Parker in our League One league over Amari Cooper, and he's going to find his way to the bench, which gives Mike incredible joy. Yeah, I mean, these guys are high risk but high reward. If 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 you're right, if Dak's shoulder's fine and Dak is out there just playing average Dak football, Against this Man, e Eagles I secondary, love Michael Gallup and 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 even Cooper. Cooper's been fine. He doesn't look like the early season self, and he's been worse on the road and yada yada. But uh, he this Eagles secondary has given it up to just about everybody. Yep. Haskins, may, you know, yeah, Haskins was a top quarterback against them. Exactly. Yeah, it and that that's where like on the Sirius XM show we said, what is a player or situation that is the very hardest for you to to weed through is that the that's a that's a phrase right yeah we yeah. can go with that um for this particular week and i think the dallas situation is a hard one not you know because there is such potential upside in the matchup because if dak is fine and look if last week you could have given him a week off between the first and second quarter and the game script was different he's probably throwing the football quite a bit more than he was and they have some uh they have some methods Mm -hmm. in these locker rooms to get a guy ready and get a guy able to go. So uh, there's a lot on the line in the call in this game. So it's all about the options you have elsewhere, how it affects your risk. But um, I'm more confident than you are this week, at least uh, here on Friday. Yeah. Uh, Zach Ertz, you playing? Yeah, I, I agree. Now, Dallas Goddard, last name does not begin with the letter H, That's but it's close. I mean, it's close in the alphabet. G H, they're right next to each other. Yeah, they're right. So, this will, he'll probably perform right next to some of those H names. Yeah, so he's going to be the the tight end thirteen this week, not top twelve, right? But he's close. Yeah, four for sixty nine and a touchdown against Dallas in week seven. Dallas has not been good against tight end. Gasicki, Gasicki, another G, Gasicki or Goddard. I would go Goddard because of the combination of the Cowboys not being great against tight end along with the Eagles not having any, you know, options to pass the ball to that aren't tight end. I mean, you've got – you see that uh, J.J. Ortega-Whiteside is now injured? Well, he, he did get banged up last week, and now he's injured in practice? Yeah, he was he was missing practice. So, uh, you know, if he's out and Aguilar's out and Alshon Jeffrey's out and, you know, maybe you t you can take a look at, at uh, that makes Greg Goddard. Ward. Yeah, better option. Greg Ward is a desperation play. Greg Ward or John Ross? It's a lot of silence. Oh, that's a man who's a, that's, somehow been twisted up by a middling wide receiver for, I, for question. I would go Greg Ward there. <laughs> I would go Greg Ward. I would take the number one wide receiver in a more difficult matchup. Interesting. There's still some weather concerns for the Tampa game. I'll have to consider my trust of your analysis. Which, to date, I mean, on this show, a lot of it's been alphabetical. Right. But so um, you know I'll, have to, I'll have to consider that a little bit with my John Ross, John Ross decision. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Sunday night football. Chiefs 10-4. and four, Bears 7-7. Seven and seven, Chiefs six-point favorites on the road in Chicago. Uh, Chicago's defense, believe it or not, has not been a top-10 defense in fantasy football since week four. So they have been solid but not special on the defensive side. Kansas City, on the other hand, is trending up. Oh. In a big way, in a, in a way that can get you a Super Bowl. Yes, for sure. I mean, the, the Chiefs' defense is a strength now, and, and it's amazing work because they were a huge weakness, and we've seen this before specifically with Andy Reid teams where the first half of the year the defense is bad and he figures out his personnel – and he gets them clicking, and they become a very solid defense. So this is, you know, you, you look at Anthony Miller, who's been on fire, a lot of targets, a very reliable now that uh, Gabriel's been out. And then you think about the Chiefs and Pat Mahomes, you go, oh, this is going to be a high-scoring game. They're going to need to air it out. This is perfect. 
but it just hasn't actually been that way in truth because the Chiefs secondary with the Honey Badger has been much improved. He's been phenomenal. They've been great. So I worry about that. I don't worry about Allen Robinson. Yeah, you had a shocking revelation yesterday. Yeah, I was looking at I, – I think it was – Week week four? Yeah, I think it was since week four um, – I was looking up the numbers for Devontae Parker, and he, you know, that was where you had uh, the first three weeks were Josh Rosen. So I want to see from week four, and lo and behold, Devontae Parker was the wide receiver five. But since week four, Allen Robinson is the wide receiver four. He has been awesome, just so consistent, and that's on the back of massive target volume. Over the last four weeks, Allen Robinson has more targets than Michael Thomas. So Allen Robinson, I'm, I'm, I'm confident in. He is an extremely talented player, and when you get the league-leading targets, I'm I'm cool with you. And then Anthony Miller, the targets have been there for a while. Uh, since week 11, I think he's the wide receiver eight in that span. He's averaged 10-plus targets a game. I love trusting targets above all other things, right? It's not You're not looking at touchdown variants. You're looking at these are the two guys playing wide receiver on this team. Very possible that there there's a deficit to be overcome. Even in, even in as far as the Chiefs' defense being so good, look, you play a def, you play a different defensive uh, strategy in the fourth quarter of a game, you're down three scores. So there's always opportunity when these two guys are running routes on e each and every play of the game. I don't think Anthony Miller is a bad play this week. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, totally, I totally understand that, um, and I don't think he's a terrible play, but I, wor I you know... He has been really good. You, I'm just thinking back to it's not just targets; it's been play. He has looked good. He's taken. He's a he's a second year wide receiver who's taken that leap forward to look like what they were hoping they drafted. The same way that Cortland Sutton has. Yeah, he's he's getting more trust of the coaching staff, more plays drawn up for him, and making those plays. It's uh, you know. Kansas City's defense has been good, but the volume has been there for the Bears in every matchup. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I get that. So we've got him. He's obviously not on the Allen Robinson level of trust, but you know he's in the wide receiver 30 range right now for us consensus-wise. Um, if you like pain, disappointment, and kind of slowly rising to mediocrity numbers, David Montgomery is an option for you this week? I don't. Okay. You I don't, don't like, like any of those I things? don't like those things. He hasn't been special on the field. It's taken uh really really plus matchups for me to like him. He needs a touchdown to be successful and uh, you know, I'm not very confident in him in this game. You always play Tyreek Hill? Always 100%. It doesn't matter the matchup, it doesn't matter the weather, it doesn't matter anything. Play Tyreek Hill. And Mahomes is in your lineup. Do you mess around with any running back options in Kansas City? Not one. Okay. There is nobody I would put in the lineup with any kind of confidence. We've named people this episode that are much better. I mean, Adrian Peterson smashes all of these guys. Also, one positive note on Sammy Watkins for you. Oh, yes. He's been nominated for a footy. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, he's got, he's got Nick, the Lizard King. That's a great nickname of the year. That's a great nickname. It, maybe he can do something. By the way, if you want to submit some nominations for the Footy Awards, you can go. Uh, hey, Brooks, is it pinned on our Twitter account, at the FF Ballers? Yes, sir. For so uh, can... nicknames and favorite show moment of the year. Okay. All right. Very prestigious. Very prestigious Footy Awards. Awards coming very soon. Packers, Vikings, Monday Night Football. Vikings, five and a half point home favorites. Now, did you know? That before the Vikings play this game, they can clinch the playoffs? That would be if the Rams lost on Saturday. That's right. Yeah. So if the Rams lose the day before, the Vikings are clinched. Now, that's there's still something to play for here because because they're playing the Packers, I think they can still win the division. That's true. So that's, that's good news. But I just worry, like, uh, maybe eh. they'll, they're going to play. It's a division matchup. Yeah, and, and look, the Vikings – They've turned this season around. They had a slow start, bunch of question marks, weird passing volume. Here they are with 10 wins, favored at home against Green Bay. I like the Vikings to win this game. Do you? I do. Uh, you're going to have to overcome having no Dalvin Cook, and he's he's integral, but Adam Thielen's back out there. Stephon Diggs and Kirk Cousins. I think they can get the job done. 
It's going to be very fun. There are some very, very exciting. The Bills-Patriots game, right? Yes. Uh, this Packers-Vikings game and then the Dallas-Philadelphia game. Those three are just such good the football. Le the league must have really strategically done this. I mean, you also have Rams-49ers, which there's not anything on the line, but there could have been. In a, you know. Oh, they always put those those important divisional games at the end of the year to make moments like this happen for you and for me. Championship moments. Mm -hmm. uh, Kirk Cousins, we have him as the quarterback 10 by consensus ranking this week. Uh, it's not a good matchup, but he has been pretty solid. I think you can I think you can roll with him, especially now that he has Adam Thielen back. I don't, so good at home. I don't think Adam Thielen's going to be uh, limited anymore he he seems like he's back back yeah Kirk Cousins at home 80 percent of his passes that's what he's completing that's a good number <laughs> that's that's pretty okay. good number pretty, pretty good uh Aaron Rodgers we know the story with Aaron it's more more often than not you're happy if you didn't play him and you played somebody else he hasn't this is crazy he hasn't thrown for more than 215 passing yards in Minnesota so on the road in Minnesota in five years wow and they they play in Minnesota each and every year. I mean, this is the definition of what happens when uh, you're in a situation like this. You know, divisional game, everything on the line. The Vikings only giving up 16.1 fantasy points per game on the year to quarterbacks. The Vikings are very exposed specifically to wide receivers and, and wide receivers beating them deep. But they, they haven't given up a ton to the quarterback because they lock down uh, the pass catching and for running backs, they lock down uh, the tight ends pretty well. So I don't think this is a good matchup for Aaron Rodgers. I'm not going to play Aaron Rodgers. The wide receiving core that can take advantage of this, I'm not trusting when you talk about the core, not trusting MBS. Yeah, you play Devontae or, Adams and that's it. That's it. Aaron Jones? Yeah, I mean, you, you probably have to play oh, Aaron Jones. he's in your Jones. lineup. Yeah. He's in your lineup. His highs are too high to not have the chance to get, but this isn't a great matchup for him. And then Jamal Williams is that, He's more of a pivot option if you run into trouble with, you know, suddenly Alexander Madison's active and you're a Mike Boone owner mm -hmm. and you're wanting to count on that big Monday game. Well, at least you could maybe pick up a guy like Jamal Williams off a of waiver wire and and pivot to him. Yeah, we, we've talked a lot about Boone, but this question was posed to me this morning. I just want to see your answer. Would you play Mike Boone in a good matchup at home, favored, against a very beatable – I mean, the, the, the Green Bay Packers are 25th against the run. Or would you play Aaron Jones? Oh, Aaron Jones. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Aaron Jones. I, I said that, Thank you thing. for waiting a long time to get to the I point. Just, I wanted to like build it up and it try out. to get you to say Mike Boone. No, and because here's the – it gets it gets complicated in these situations sometimes where you just kind of hand the roll off to a player. And you forget that you also have Amir Abdullah there, and Mike Boone could miss a blitz pickup, or CJ Ham like, could take the passing word. Exactly, there are variables beyond just like Dalvin Cook is out, Madison gets a hundred percent of everything. Madison's out, Boone gets a hundred. That's not how it works. I mean, they want to win the football game, and if Boone messes up or they get a goal line opportunity and Boone fails twice, you could see somebody else next time. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. It's like he's not. Aaron Jones. I hear you. Start Amir Abdullah. That's what oh, I heard. Oh, come on. And Haskins, <laughs> right? Haskins and Abdullah. <laughs> choo choo. All right. Um, anything else from this game that you want to touch on? Stephon Diggs, we have at 15 on the week, leading the league in yards per target. He always needs a big play to kind of give you a big day. Big play, big day. Big play, big day. I'm not starting any tight ends in this matchup. If I had to, it would be Rudolph. I would never touch Jimmy Graham. You would, you wouldn't even like you took a restraining order out on yourself. That's right. I'm to not, not allowed come to be within a hundred mm -hmm. yards of Jimmy Graham. <laughs> Ballers on a budget, presented by FanDuel. I like yours better, dude. Mine's awesome. That's Mike the real price, huh? Mike, I couldn't believe it. So here, I'll start. How about that? All right. By the way, Catch reminding reminding our listeners, you can go to uh, fanduel.com slash ballers to participate this week. The Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. We've got our budget picks today. This is a couple the, of juicy ones. This is the best week. Look, if you're listening and you haven't gotten in yet at fanduel.com slash ballers, 
This is the best week because there will probably be the fewest amount of people that you are competing against to win. So go to FanDuel.com slash ballers. Have that chance to you know win the grand prize. Come out here, all expense paid uh, trip. Should be a good time. So I went on, genuinely, to probably pick Justin Watson. Because while there are major concerns, you know, the fact that he has only one good game in his career, in his short career, and that required everyone being injured in front of him, the reality is everybody is injured in front of him. And he should, if Jameis is going to have a good game, I can't see Watson not having at least five for 50, and I assumed his price would be so low that he's a good play to get in. And so when I went to pick him and I found out his price was only 5700 I was like, all right. What is this? At $5,700, Marquise Hollywood Brown is the same price as Justin Superstar Watson. I'm taking the guy that's already three times been a top 12 quarterback with the MVP as his uh, top 12 wide receiver with the MVP as a quarterback. Hollywood Brown at 5700 is such a good price that I am in for sure. Over the fake superstar? Yes, over the fake uh, Justin... Fake, Fake superstar. superstar Watson. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, I love that. Hollywood Brown, great upside at that price. I also love the pl- uh, the price on my start of the week. Tyler Boyd, just 6200 you got to pay more for Adam Thielen going up against Green Bay without confidence in his hamstring and what that game's going to look like. And Boyd gets to play Miami in that secondary. That Look, somebody's going to put up a big game against them. The odds are that it's Tyler Boyd, the guy who leads the team in targets over a John Ross. Boyd at 6200 very cheap, very inexpensive compared to the value I think you're going to get from him. So our two ballers on a budget picks. I like it. All right, we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Kenny Galladay signed jersey, $68.80 yesterday at pristineauction.com. Make sure you sign up. When you do, let them know the fantasy footballers sent you. You can do that by putting in the code BALLERS. That'll get you $5 towards a sports memorabilia purchase. But otherwise... Good luck to you. Join us an hour before game time. Twitter at the FF Ballers, YouTube.com slash Fantasy Footballers. And join us for Sunday Live. Good luck this week. It's been a fun week. Let's get those titles. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, this holiday season, immerse yourself in all of your favorite holiday classics with a new home theater system from Sonos. Think about that person that you'd love to gift Sonos to. I've got my sister on the list to get her that great sound for watching television or listening to um, her favorite albums. And Sonos is just a great technology. Everybody who gets it as a gift, you're not getting something cheap. You're getting something that's you know, well-made and will add to your life. So check them out. Go to Sonos.com, learn more, and complete your holiday shopping.